Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with a little bit more Judges. This time we're going to go with Chapter 8. And this chapter had so much good stuff in it. I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much I can pull out of this to do a quick little word of encouragement. What what in the world you know, should I choose? There was just such a, a, a ripe amount of stuff. It was so juicy and tasty and yummy. And I'm going to leave a description in the link below. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave a description in the link below. And it's going to be back to another message where I was talking about how sometimes there's just so much good stuff in the Bible. The Bible's chock full of good stuff, but some chapters just seem to be particularly chock full. This is one of them. I'm going to go with two quick lessons from the beginning of this. So starting with verse 1. Now the men of Ephraim said to him, that is Gideon, Why have you done this to us by not calling us when you went to fight with the Midianites? And they rep reprimanded him sharply. So he said to them, What have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abizer? Because he's from the Abizrites, who are from the, turn over the page, they're from the Ephraimite. No, I'm sorry, the Manasseh. He's, he's from the tribe of Manasseh. And he's from the house of Abizer. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly, probably not. God has delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger toward him subsided when he said that. So he kind of played it cool. He was like, yeah, I did this, but look at how great a thing you've done. You know, what you've done is definitely better than what I've done. So he, he played it cool, and then they weren't as mad at him anymore. So he was trying to make sure that there wasn't like some kind of breakout of war between his tribe and that tribe. He didn't want to divide the people. So he just kind of let them have the credit or take a little bit more credit. And so he w it was like the, it's like the verse in Proverbs where it says, a wise reply turns away wrath. It's something to that effect. Google's your friend. And I have to admit, part of me when I read that, I was like, what a wimp. Why is he he why did I mean he's he the Lord has just used him to rout a crap load of people. In fact, that number is given in this chapter. And I'm not gonna give that number away. I'm so mean, I'm so bad. Just go to Judges chapter eight. Do a little bit of digging for yourself. It's good to dig into the Bible. It's very worthwhile. Trust me on that. A lot, pretty much every Christian on the planet <laughs> will agree with me on that. It's a good thing to read the Bible. So let's hop down to verse 4. When Gideon came to the Jordan, he and the 300 men who were with him crossed over, exhausted but still in pursuit. And he said to the men of Sukkoth, Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are exhausted. I am pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. And the leaders of Sukkoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? Absolutely refusing to help him. So Gideon said, For this cause, when the Lord has delivered Zeba and Zalmunna into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. Then he went up from there to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth had answered. So he also spoke to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come back in peace, I will tear down this tower. So nothing wimpy about him. And sure enough, when he, um, be, when he captured Zeba and Zalmanna, it just read on down further. He Sure enough, he beat the elders of Sukkoth with thorns and briars and thistles. And he tore, not only tore down the tower in Penuel, he also killed all the men of that city. So nothing wimpy about him. Apparently he simply didn't want to start a war with um, with the opposing tribe because apparently he could have kicked their butts pretty freaking easily. Unless they were part of his army, in which case he couldn't. I'm not sure. Political intrigue? Possibly. Him wimping out? I still don't think so. I don't believe that is the case. I believe... And of course if the Lord's with you, it doesn't matter. You can... You could literally take on the entire world. Jesus much, anyone? Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you guys. God bless.